There are hundreds, if not thousands, of pro and anti-Bitcoin arguments to be made. Across YouTube and financial media, you will find a wide range of people arguing their take. But nobody is talking about what is, in my opinion, Bitcoin's biggest downfall and danger. Fungibility. Now, this critique applies not only to Bitcoin, but every single cryptocurrency that has a public ledger. And why this is important to understand, I will explain in a minute. But before I do, I wanted to give some credit to the original man who gave me the inspiration to make this video. Honestly, one of YouTube's most underrated creators, Coding Jesus. I'll link his video discussing this topic down below. He's actually much more knowledgeable than I am, and if you want to know all the details, make sure you check his video out. When you bring up the word fungibility around anyone who's a Bitcoin fan, they will likely blow you off and call you a troll. But fungibility is actually incredibly important in understanding where the future of Bitcoin is headed. And based on some of these facts, I would rethink your price predictions in the long term. So let's get started with some basic facts. Obviously, we need to outline what fungibility even is, and how it could end up being Bitcoin's fatal flaw, preventing it from becoming the future that everyone seems to think it's guaranteed to hold. Fungibility is officially defined as the ability of a good or asset to be interchanged with other individual goods or assets of the same type. Think of a gold bar. You can take a gold bar and exchange it with another gold bar of the same mass. This new gold bar, in theory, would not lose any value. It would be worth exactly the same as the first. Fungibility implies that two things are identical in specification, where individual units can be mutually substituted. So you're probably now thinking, well, Bitcoin fits this description. I can trade one Bitcoin for another, and the value would obviously stay the same. There basically is only one price for Bitcoin. Turns out that's actually not true at all. Bitcoin, as you will see in a minute, is a non-fungible asset. But before I explain, you have to understand another feature about Bitcoin. Bitcoin has something called public blockchain. Think of this public blockchain as a public Excel sheet that contains every transaction involving Bitcoin since the start. In its most simple form, Bitcoin is really just a list. Person A sent X Bitcoin to person B, who sent Y Bitcoin to person C, etc. By tallying all these transactions up, everyone knows where individual users stand. This distributed ledger or list is available for all to see. Anyone can download it in its entirety or go to any number of sites that parse it. So this is where things get interesting. When you receive a Bitcoin, you are likely not the first person to get it. It probably has a history where it exchanged hands going from person A to person B to person C, etc. before finally getting to you. So what about this makes it non-fungible? Well, it starts with this idea of version versus tainted versus regular Bitcoin. At the end of the day, Bitcoin isn't considered fungible because it has different values depending on which of these three categories it falls under. Virgin Bitcoin trades at a premium, and Tainted Bitcoin trades at a discount. Virgin Bitcoin, which is Bitcoin just mined fresh off the print, is very valuable. Its transaction history is empty. Now on the other side of that, we have Tainted Bitcoin. Tainted Bitcoin is Bitcoin that has been through the hands of a nefarious organization or people with illicit transaction history. So you may be wondering how anyone can determine what makes a Bitcoin transaction illicit, and I had the same thought when I originally heard about this. Turns out there is an entire industry dedicated to tracing and mapping Bitcoin transactions, wallets, and other information related to illicit activity. One of those companies is Chain Analysis, and going to their website you can see they're an entire organization that is dedicated to blockchain analysis, providing data, software, services, and research to government agencies, exchanges, financial institutions, and insurance and cybersecurity companies. So why does this all matter to you? Well, you can actually receive a tainted Bitcoin without knowing it, and the repercussions can be severe. Just like when you receive a $100 bill in your hands, you don't care that it was used to buy drugs or weapons in the transaction before you or 10 transactions before you, nor do you check its serial number to ensure that it's all clean. This concept applies to your Bitcoin transactions as well, but unfortunately, large exchanges regulated by big government and corporations do care in regards to Bitcoin associated with past illicit activity. In fact, if you send Bitcoin to a big exchange and they happen to run analysis on it and find that five hops ago it was associated with something crazy like terrorism or ransom payments, well there's a very good chance that that exchange confiscates that Bitcoin and will then require you to send in a long series of documents to ensure you were clean and unassociated. 
Proving this is very difficult, and unfortunately this scenario does indeed happen all the time. Just Google tainted Bitcoin and you can read all the examples. Obviously, in order to prevent money laundering, terrorism, and other crimes, the US and other large governments are very interested in tracking Bitcoin transactions. So while the concept of Bitcoin has its origins in fighting against big government and regulation, the fact that there is a public spreadsheet of all transactions makes this sort of attracting to intelligence agencies and other businesses who can afford to map out wallets and develop algorithms that can indeed do a great job of spotting illicit activity, activity that may be traced back to you unfairly. You can see just how worried governments are regarding Bitcoin by seeing how they treat mixing services, which are essentially organizations that allow users to mix their coins with other users, making it almost impossible to detect destination addresses. The Department of Justice actually just arrested the operator of one of the world's largest mixing services, Roman Sterlingov, a man who's not even a U.S. citizen. So in summary, while the origin of Bitcoin was created upon this foundation of libertarian and anti-government ideals, Bitcoin has sort of been transformed into this asset that has received the approval of the U.S. Treasury and large corporations. Although this may sound like a fatal flaw to many, I personally still believe Bitcoin's future price will only appreciate from here due to a number of other factors. But its success is not the one that was originally envisioned by its early adapters, especially those who believed that it would unshackle us from this modern financial system rooted in centralized control. Today's Bitcoin is a different beast and it's used as an alternative form of storing your wealth in times where the US dollar is taking a big hit following unprecedented money printing. Thank you guys for watching and as always please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to enjoy more content like this.